Greetings from the ThemeRex team. In this video, we are going to talk about how to add and use a Blogger shortcode in a query theme. With the help of the Blogger shortcode widget, you can display posts, pages, or custom post types from a specified category or group. Let's get started. To add a query theme Blogger shortcode to any page, edit the page with Elementor. Add a simple container. Click on this plus button and select the default container layout. After that, click on this cube icon, search for blogger, and drag and drop this short code to the page. Our Blogger shortcode widget is now added to our page. First, let's check out the different layouts that we can use for your blog post. On the left side, you will see the Layout tab, and next to it, you will see a drop down button. Click on it. Here you will see multiple layouts. You can set it to a list. You can set it to News. You can set it to Layout Portfolio. You can set it to Layout Portfolio Grid. You can go with Portfolio Modern. or you can go with Portfolio Real Estate. You have a bunch of layout options that you can use according to your own choice. For this tutorial, we will go with the standard one. Let's select the standard from here. I think now it looks good, but still later in this tutorial, we will style it using the settings and filters. Now, we are going to see how we can display different post types using this Blogger shortcode. You are not limited to displaying posts using this widget, but you can also display different post types. To display pages post type, select pages from the post type dropdown. You can display landing pages from here. You can also display your WooCommerce products using this widget. Moreover, you can display upcoming events and more. After that, we have the taxonomy option. With this option, you can display different post types with different taxonomies. Let's say you select post from the post type. And after that, you will see this taxonomy option next to it. If you click on this drop down, you can display the posts according to categories, tags, or formats. If you select the categories from this taxonomy option here, then you can type the category here. Let's say I want to display only modern posts here. I will select this modern category from here, and here you will see all the posts under this category. You can use any other taxonomy for this. If you want to display posts based on the formats, then you can select formats from here, and here you will see different posts, and also you can display them according to other taxonomy available, which is tags. Similarly, if you select products from the post type, then you will see different taxonomies. You can display them according to the product type, or you can display them with the product visibility and product categories. If I select product categories taxonomy, 
then we can select the categories from here. I will go with the furniture. And here we'll see all the furniture category products. You can easily display content according to the post type and as well as according to the taxonomies that are available. Let's check out all the settings and filters that will help us to customize our posts, pages, or products. From the post type, I will go with the post. And from the taxonomy, I will select category. I will select a few categories like modern, formats, and then cases. Also, you can display the post with the help of post IDs. If I go to all the posts and edit any post, I will edit this one. And on the top of the post, you will see this number. This is called post ID. I will copy it from here. After that, I will go back to my page and I will paste my ID here. Here, you will see your post. But for now, we are going to remove it. Let's customize our posts with filters and settings. At first, we have this count option. Using this, we can increase and decrease the number of posts that will be displayed on our page. As you can see currently, we have three posts displaying on our page and we can increase or decrease this number using this slider. We will increase the post number to six. After that, we have the columns option. We can choose two or three columns according to our own choice. If I choose three columns, then our six posts are aligned in two different columns. but we will go with the two columns because it looks better. After that, we have this offset option. If you want to skip the first post and display this post as a number one, then you can use this offset. If I set it to one, as you can see, the first post is now skipped and we can see the second post in the first place. After that, we have another filter, which is order by. From here, you can select the display order for your posts. You can use post ID, date, title, likes number, or views number. But from here, we are going to select the date because we want to display our post according to the date. After that, for the order, you can set it to ascending or descending, but I will choose ascending from here. This way, our posts will be arranged from newest to oldest. After that, we have another option, which is pagination. You can set it to previous or next, or you can go with page numbers, advanced page numbers, load more, or you can set it to infinite scroll. For this tutorial, we are going to set it to page numbers. Now, if we scroll down to the bottom of my page, here we will see the page numbers. Our website users can use this navigation to view the older posts. Now we are going to do settings for the image, meta tags, descriptions, and read more button. Click on this layout button. First, we can set the image size. Currently, it is set to default, and you can change it according to your own choice. If you want to change it, just click on this drop down, and from here you can easily change it. I will keep the default value for now. Next is the image hover. 
you can set the image hover effect for your blog post image. Currently, it is set to inherit, but you can change it according to your taste. I will set it to zoom. And now, if I hover over an image, it will nicely zoom in. After that, we have some meta parts. Currently, it is very confusing and does not look good. We are going to remove a few meta parts. Let's remove ratings, links, share links, post authors, and comments. And now it looks better. Next is the description of the blog post. It is also called an excerpt. You can hide it from here. Also, you can set the maximum word length from here. I will set it to 30. After that, we have the Read More button. You can turn it on or off. Also, you can change the text of your Read More button. I am going to change it to Learn More. Now, as you can see, our Read More button text is changed. We can also display our content in a slider using this widget. If I turn it on, as you can see, our posts are displayed in a slider. We can also do the settings for our slider. You can set different effects for your slider like swap, slide, cube, or fade. We will select slide. After that, we will add the spacing between our posts. We are going to set it to 30 pixels. We can hide or show the slider controls. Now we are going to set up slider controls. We will select the bottom option. Our website visitors can use these slider controls to check out different posts easily. After that, you also have a slider pagination. You can set it to left, right, bottom, or outside. We can enable or disable the autoplay of the slider. We also have a loop option. If you want to display the slider in the loop, then you can turn it on. Also, you can add filters to your blog page. If I scroll down to the bottom, here I have a Filters tab, and I can use this tab to add filters to my blog page. First, we are going to add the filters title. Here you can add the filters title. You can also add a subtitle for it. You can change the position for it. I will set it to the left. After that, we will add a filter tab here. We are going to turn it on. Here you will see the Filters tab and you can filter the post according to the tabs. Let's say if you want to check out the post for any specific category, then you can choose it from here and you will see all the posts of that category. Here you will see all the categories that you have created on your website. But if you want to show specific categories here, then go to Post and then click on Categories and edit the category that you want to add. I want to add blog, cases, and information categories there. We're going to edit these categories. In the website URL, you will see the category ID. Copy the ID. Go to our page and then paste it. Do this for the other two categories. Now on the top, you will see only three categories that we have added. You can also turn off all the categories, and then we will see only three categories that we have displayed here, but we are going to turn it on. 
Now we have done all the settings for our Blogger shortcode widget and we're going to update our page. If we click on the three lines button and then click the view page, we will see the blog page that we have just created using the query theme Blogger shortcode widget. Also, you can add this widget to any other page, section, or column. Let's say I want to add a small blog section on my About Us page. So I'll copy it from here, then go to the About Us page, and then edit the page with Elementor. Now I'm going to scroll down to the bottom, where I want to add this short code. After that, I'm going to click on this plus icon. From here, you can select any structure where you want to add your short code. For this, we will go with the two column layout. In the second container, we are going to paste our blogger widget. Select the widget and set the layout to list. And also, we are going to click on Layout and then turn off the slider. Next, we will go back to Content. And now we are going to add a category. Let's go with the Cases. And for the post count, we will set it to 3. For the columns, we will set it to 1. And for the offset, we will set it to 0. Click on Layout again, and from the template, we are going to select a width image. From the image position, we will set it to the left. For the image width, we are going to set it to 25%. And then, for the meta parts, we are going to remove views and modify date. Now click on the content tab, scroll down, and turn off the filter. And also, we are going to remove this filter title from here. In the second container, we are going to add an image. Let's select it, drag and drop the image element to the page, and click Choose Image. Select the image. I think this one looks good. We are going to choose it and then click on Select Again. Now let's select the column, and for the vertical alignment, we will set it to middle. You can use this widget on any page, section, or column, and you can easily customize it according to your own choice. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. Please like the video if it was useful, and subscribe for new tutorials.